Hey guys, for this video, I'm going to share with you how much we have spent to charge our Tesla Model Y performance for the first 3,000 miles. I'm also going to compare this to what we would have spent had we kept our 2018 Lexus RX350. And lastly, I'm going to tell you about a company that allows you to charge for free while you shop. It sounds too good to be true, right? But it's true. Are you ready? Let's go. We have had our Model Y for exactly three months and we have put a little over 3,000 miles. And I wanted to close register right now and make numbers on how much it has cost us to charge this vehicle for the first three months and 3,000 miles. Our situation is the following. We do not have a home charger and we live nearby a supercharger station. Uh, we have made about five trips of maybe 200 miles on average. And I have the ability to charge at work at 110 volt outlet, which gives me about four miles per hour and coincidentally the recharge and the commute are about the same so when I take it to work I usually recharge what I spend for the day. I also have used Volta which is a network of charging stations. There's one located nearby at a shopping center that allows you to charge for free while you shop. And one more thing, I used a friend's referral code and so I got a thousand free miles when I bought my Tesla. That in reality is more like 900 miles, less than 900 miles, but I'm going to leave it at 900 just for the purposes of this update. When Tesla says that you potentially save an X amount of money driving a Tesla Model Y compared to a gas engine car, it uses an average of 28 miles per gallon, but in my case, I average a combined MPG of 23 miles on our 2018 Lexus RX350, which is a comparable vehicle. The battery pack on our Model Y is 75 kilowatt hour nominal. According to experts, this is a very efficient, but rather small battery. It is smaller than that in the Mustang Mach-E, and that's just for comparison. In the real world, People don't ask me about battery sizes, battery packs, efficiency, price per kilowatt hour, or any of that technical stuff. The usual question is more like, how much do you save with this car versus the Lexus you used to have? Or things like, is it really cheaper to recharge? Is it expensive to recharge it? Another popular question is, how long does it take to recharge? And that is why I'm making this video and I'm trying to make it in a way that I understand it in just plain English, just to share our experience. The odometer says 3,082 and I have 101 miles left of range. I have paid a total of $148.39 in charges and if we deduct the first 900 referral miles, then we have 2,182 miles to work with minus the range left, which makes it 2,081. 2,081 miles driven on $148.39 is not bad at all. It's actually pretty good. Now let's see what that amount of money would have bought me worth of gas for or RX350. I'm going to average out the price of gas in California, which for the last three months, I averaged it to be, according to my calculations, is $3.91. So with $148, I would have bought 37.95 gallons of gas, which would have driven us 872 miles, which is less than half, 42% precisely of what we have driven, not counting the first 900 miles. If we were to include those uh, 900 miles, then it's less than one third or 29%. Money wise, the RX350 would have cost us $523.94 for the first 3,082 miles worth of regular gas. If gas prices continue to be at this price and we keep driving or model wipe like we have for about an average of 1,000 miles per month, our yearly savings will be $1,502. But don't quote me on that because we know that gas prices fluctuate and my guess is that throughout the year, the prices are gonna fluctuate downward. Yes, I understand that this is not an apples to apples comparison, but it is our experience. Yours may and will vary most likely. My point is charging our Model Y for the first three months has been way cheaper than gassing up our prior SUV. And this was the perfect time to do this comparison because in as little as one week, our first referral will kick in which is going to drop our charging, our charging expenses even lower. And remember, we didn't buy this car or Model Y with the intention of saving money. But with gas prices hovering over the $4 mark, it is nice to be able to save a little on the day to day. We truly love this car and it just happens to be super cheap to recharge. Please let me know in the comments if you think that I'm making an unfair comparison. I try to use all the variables that are particular to our situation. Also, please 
Note that charging fees vary depending on what time of the day you recharge your electric car, which is different than with gas cars because it doesn't matter what time of the day you fill up, the price is the same. Charging for free at voltage stations or at work when possible has become a cool hobby that adds to the experience. I estimate that we have gotten about 450 miles charging those two ways. Ideally, the most convenient and cheapest way to charge your electric vehicle is with a home charger at home but we have found ways to make the best of things without one. And in contrast, I just don't remember a day in my life where I was afforded the opportunity to, to gas up for free. Free gas never happened to me. About voltage charging stations, about a month into our ownership, I discovered this free charging station at a nearby shopping center. I saw this Model 3 charging and um, I approached the gentleman and I asked him, as to why was he using that when the Tesla supercharger station was just around the corner. And he told me uh, because this is for free. Ever since, I try to make sure to get a few miles worth of range for free while we do our grocery shopping. This is what it says on the Volta website, and I quote, We set out to accelerate the arrival of EV charging. We build the most utilized EV charging network in the U.S., offering free charging to drivers, whatever they like to be. Our stations double as an ad platform that increases the value of real estate by engaging new audiences and by telling high impact stories using sustainable technology. Sounds too good to be true, right? But it works and it's free and free stuff is always welcome. Notice that I haven't talked about the touchy subject of range and this is because I'm still trying to find the ideal scenario where I can get as close as possible to the 303 miles claimed by Tesla. In real life, I can count on about 260 miles of range. Actually, last weekend, we made a round trip totaling 208 miles, and we started with 283 miles of range, and on the way there, I was doing more like 75 to 80 miles an hour, and um, it, there was five adults in the vehicle with the ACU on full blast, and we were stuck in traffic for about 30 minutes. On the way back, I was more careful, so I was doing more like 65 to 70, and at the end of our trip, I only had 17 miles of range left so as you can see that day we were far from getting close to the claimed range of 303 miles granted the vehicle was loaded to capacity and i was driving a little faster on the way there the best video i watched about the topic is from alex on autos and i'll leave you the link to the video so that you can check it out i'll leave it in the description box and i still want to make a dedicated trip to see how close i can get to the claimed range of 303 miles but for that i will need to find the ideal conditions that help me improve the real world range my guess is it just won't happen it hasn't happened i don't think it will happen for those of you that own a model y whether you have the extended range or the performance please let me know in the comments if you have gotten close to the claim miles uh, for that particular trim level I'm going to leave you the link to Volta Charging in the description box for you to find out if there is any stations nearby you so that you can benefit from this. And I'm also going to leave you my referral link so you can win a thousand free miles of Tesla supercharging. Thank you and I'll see you next time.